times. <laughs> Tremendously. But likewise, thanks to the committee chairs for your uh, time and uh, attendance, uh, second chair and our, our um, committee on finance. Uh, I think taking advantage of it gave us additional insight to the policies of the subject matter chairs. And I think the participation uh, of them uh, both enlightened and even at times entertained us, Mr. Speaker. Um, and again, they contributed generously to the uh, Hawaii Food Bank also. And finally, I must thank my finance staff, um, truly the unsung heroes, the ones that work day in, day out, behind those walls, without any windows, often cloistered away in those dark crevices and corners that mere mortals fear to tread. They've worked uh, together very well. Uh, none of us uh, lost anyone and the crew uh, remained uh, comfortable and comforting to each other. Our permanent and session staff include, Mr. Speaker, uh, Joe Hamasaki. He's the one that actually put together the uh, budget itself, the document you see before you, the committee reports. Uh, he niched and stitched the entire budget together. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Karen Harita was also with us in the front office. Puna Chai, Susan Fernandez, Eric Abe, Randa Hioto, Stacy Tagala, Nandana Kalapohana, that's not Hawaiian, that's Sri Lankan. Lucy Fan, Maria Milan, Midori Hirai, Bill Gillespie, Marianne Takahashi, Megan Shimizu, Erin Ibisuya, Daniel Kikawa. You know, Daniel was an uh, intern from the University of Hawaii and one of the fortunate lucky ones to land up in the uh, House Finance Committee. But he is well on his way, prepped and prepared for a law school at the Richardson School of Law in, in fall. So he uh, learned a lot, and he said he really enjoyed his experience. Uh, Napolani uh, Young, she was the last uh, research analyst, to, uh, fiscal analyst to join us. I think she's going to be a stay on. I think she got the bug of being at the legislature. I think she's going to be working with uh, uh, Chairman uh, Kaufman's uh, office as his new office manager. Uh, Carissa Look, a second, ta second time a veteran. Matthew Sujimura, first timer. Micah Munetkata, and Michael Ong. Mr. Speaker, how about a round of applause for the uh, finance staff? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, at his inaugural speech four years ago, Hawaii's President Obama said, the question we ask today is not whether our government is Herb, too big. Excuse me, Mr. Marcus Oshiro yeah. Manahan, would you yield your time? Yes, I'll yield my time, Speaker. Your whole introduction took up your first half of your Yeah, th speech. thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's Please proceed. But I believe the kudos were well deserved and earned, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, um, you know, four years ago, President Obama, in his inaugural address, made these, uh, these statements. The question we ask today is not whether our government is too big or too small, but whether it works whether it helps families find jobs at a decent wage, care they can afford, or retirement is dignified. Where well, the answer is yes, we intend to move forward. Where well, the answer is no, programs will end. Those of us who manage the public's dollars will be held to account, because only then can we restore the vital trust between the people and their government. I believe these words are even more applicable and noteworthy today. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Finance has accepted its responsibility to craft a supplemental budget constrained by the dynamic and constantly changing fiscal realities. We have not taken the easy route, Mr. Speaker, but kept on the course set last year as we continue our voyage through the turbulent waters of the Great Recession. We have not deviated from the course and challenge you set for us last year. Mr. Speaker, this is why we maintain that a steady, deliberative approach to this budget remains a prudent attempt at preparing for the challenges in reprioritizing, rehabilitating, and renewing government service in the years ahead. And that's right, the three R's. Reprioritizing, rehabilitating, and renewing government service for employees and those they serve. 
The short term and long term goals of the budget are to triage targeted programs to ensure that the most basic needs are met, particularly in human services, education, and agriculture. Those are the basics. Support long-term planning and accountability efforts to fundamentally change the character and delivery of government services. Mr. Speaker, for the past three years, since 2009, uh, Common Visual Aid in our Finance Hearing Conference Room has been, poster, has been a poster which prompted answers to four fundamental questions. And many of you have seen it. The first question was, how far can we cut government programs and services? Second question, what programs and services are we willing to live without? Third question, are we willing to pay more for the programs and services we want? And the fourth question, what do we want Hawaii to look like when the recession ends? As I look back on this session, I feel that there are still those who believe that any resources available should be spent simply to return to the status quo. Mr. Speaker, to spend money simply because we can, or to merely restore programs that were cut in the past without evaluation and assessment of a return on investment or outcomes is simply not the right thing to do. To do so means that we have not learned the lessons of the recession for which we emerge. And let us keep in mind that we are barely addressing longer term liabilities of our public workers, our public workers pension systems, the employee retirement system, and health insurance costs of the employer union trust fund. This is, Mr. Speaker, my business, biggest disappointment of this session, of this budget. See, about four years ago, the GASB reporting requirements were issued to all states. When we at the state level were notified that we should begin to set aside monies for the unfunded liability facing us to fund government employees and retiree health benefits, the EUTF. Mr. Speaker, all the counties have to some degree put aside a portion of money for this purpose, but the state of Hawaii has not. We should be setting aside nearly $500 million per year in the EUTF to ensure that we can pay... Mr. Speaker, I yield my time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, please proceed. We should be setting aside nearly $500 million per year of the EU, in the EUTF to ensure that we can pay for retiree health benefits when the time comes. We could not get agreement to set aside a mere 10% of that amount, $50 million, as a down payment, a good faith gesture, earnest money on our future obligations to our current retirees and current workers. We had in our fiscal plan a means to meet these objectives over a six-year period. Mr. Speaker, at a last ditch, ditch effort, I even sought to deposit $5 million, $5 million of the House portion of the $50 million GIA and bill allocations that you and Senate President allowed us to use last week Friday. But that too was rejected, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let us not bury our hands in the sand. The longer we wait to set aside any money for this obligation, the more expensive it will become. Then, we will no longer be arguing about how much to spend on human services, or arguing about how much to spend on education, or how much to spend on agriculture, or how much to spend on watersheds. The only thing we'll be paying for then will be fixed government costs of debt service, Medicaid, and retirement benefits pension and health care for government employees and retirees. But actually, Mr. Speaker, let me correct that. There is a solution. We can eliminate health care coverage for current and future workers. No longer will our brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, mothers and fathers, who are teachers, plant quarantine inspectors, librarians, prison guards, get support in assessing health care 
after they retire. They'll be on their own. But that is absurd and unnecessary. Mr. Speaker, our recovery nationally and our recovery here at home has changed the lives of everyone. We know that for the next three or four years, we will not get back to the robust unemployment numbers of early 2005, 2006, maybe to 2015 or 2018. We will no longer experience the skyrocketing growth of the mid 2000s, but a more moderate pace of maybe two to three percent over the next four or five years. Mr. Speaker, we are a state in where one in five of our population is on Medicaid. Most young families cannot afford a mortgage, even with historically low interest rates. And the middle class watches their dreams and the dreams of their children vanish into exhaustion for working two or more jobs to support a family as the income divide deepens and inflation eats away at their gains. Is this what we want Hawaii to look like when the recession ends, or the effects of the recession ends? Mr. Speaker, this budget, if revenue projections of the Council of Revenues come through, may provide us opportunity next year. But all we did this year was miss a golden opportunity to stabilize our long-term financial plan and provide for stronger state fiscal health. But Mr. Speaker, despite my personal disappointment, there is much good in this budget. And those of you who are here in 2007 may remember our top 10 reasons to vote for the budget that I used. Vice Chair Lee has it before us. Budget cuts in 2008 reduced that list to the top five reasons to vote for the budget. Vice Chair Lee also has that chart. Mr. Speaker, colleagues, times are tough, but in spite of the recovery that is ahead of us, if we stay the course, I offer you a renewed, rehabilitated, and reprioritized Top 10 reasons to vote for the budget in 2012. Number one. Thank you. Number one, 250000 to develop an early childhood obesity and diabetes prevention program for the state, one of the governor's initiatives. Number two, $1 million for the freeway service patrol on Oahu, which starts at Fort Weaver Road I will now extend coverage to Ainakoa Street in Hawaii Kai. 1.4 million and 19 positions for staffing shortages, electricians, carpenters, plumbers, and housing specialists. Mr. Speaker, roads. Mr. Speaker, you, <coughs> excuse me, I yield my time. So order, please Th proceed. Thank Martha you. Sushiro. 1.4 million and 19 positions for staffing shortages, electricians, carpenters, plumbers, and housing specialists will get uninhabitable rental units repaired for waitlisted applicants without a roof over their heads. And over $5 million, Mr. Speaker, to launch the Governor's Watershed Initiative, a program to protect priority watersheds throughout the state. Number five, $3.3 million for Hawaii's Adult Education Program, which provides GED, English as a Second Language, and competency-based programs necessary to attain a degree 